the event, Will Pulliam and Zach Allen. Strong players. In the modern seat, we have a four-color Urza mirror match. Expected a mirror match. Didn't expect it with those decks. And then the Rakdos Reanimator, the choice of Will Pulliam. They're both very smart players. So Esper Hero against Bant Scapeshift. Be Esper Hero, a bit of a mid-range deck. Mid-range deck can flex into control. Now, oftentimes those decks will struggle against something like Scapeshift. Right. It's a little bit harder to interact with the land-based strategies like this. And the way that the Esper Hero decks try to interact is just kind of reducing the resources that both players have before having some card advantage engine, Hero of Precinct 1, a Planeswalker, and so on, to build back up. On Corey's side, we see a turn 2 Arboreal Grazer ramping him up to a third land. And Sarani having this turn 2 Hero of Precinct 1 is so strong here. Right. Lots of Kaya shoots down the blocker and he swings in. Well, I think to your point, if the game goes long enough, Corey will be at an advantage. But this hero actually allows Shaheen to play an aggressive strategy. Right. This is the spot where Sarani is able to kind of try and disrupt what Baumeister's doing and just apply some pressure, disrupt a thing, hit you for some damage, disrupt a thing, hit you for some damage. It's similar to the Delver or Death Shadow strategies we see in the Eternal formats. So despite the pressure, Corey is still firing on all cylinders here. Turn three was a copy of Circuitous Route to get him up to six lands. Well, next turn is the first turn that Field of the Dead is going to start creating bodies. Second hero from Brian. Those are also going to create some bodies. Yeah. And we see... Ooh. Ooh, okay, our sweeper here from Corey. Going to be Time Wipe. And a Memorial to Genius hiding out down there is actually a very good land for Baumeister in this particular matchup because it is just one piece of cardboard that can turn into multiple pieces of cardboard. And no follow-up for Sarani. Had just the two heroes. And now sits back. No counter magic in the main for Sarani either. This is the spot where... Serrani was kind of priced in to just jamming that hero because he knew that next turn could be the scape shift turn and he needed to apply pressure. Otherwise, he's just not going to be able to win the game if it goes long, like we were talking about before. Now, with these land-based strategies, there is a fail rate. You see Corey. Elvish Rejuvenators into a Hollowed Fountain. I was looking for a scape shift to follow up there, but he did not have it. He makes Field of Ruin instead. Right, but, you know, it's not exactly like he's falling behind here by any stretch. This Teferi is a very powerful card, but it's not the kind of thing that's going to be able to profitably interact with what Baumeister's doing. Sarani needs to find some sort of pressure here. Growth Spiral to start from Baumeister. Trying into a lot of lands in his hand here. None of them, though, are Field of the Dead. Looks like he's thinking about if he even wants to put anything into play because he right. might just want to save his land drops for when he has a copy of Field of the Dead. That was my thought here. And it looks like he chooses not to put a land into play off Growth Spiral. He will draw two off the Memorial. May have cashed in a few too many luck points on that uh, time wipe earlier. Really just looking for no. copies of Field of the Dead at this point. Blossoming Sands gains him a life. Attacks to Fairy down to four. The Oath triggers. It's Ronnie back to work. Without the Field of Dead or Scape Shift, I don't think Corey will be able to an answer this to Fairy. No, he really needs to try and find something here to just get anything on the battlefield. Yeah. Main deck answers for Shaheen. If, he, if a Scape Shift or a zombie army shows up, he has two main deck Deputy of Detention. 
it looks like he has two copies of Dovin's Veto hiding out in his list okay. as well. He may be trying to represent those. Okay, so... Uh-oh. And <laughs> Giant Hydrate Crisis for Corey. Splash. Yeah, that is an 8-8. Eight, eight. He will draw four. Yeah, you're right. So I was speaking a little early when I said he had no counter magic. He does have two counter spells in the main. Please make your way to table 349. 8-8 Crisis. To ferry back down to four. It's always hard whenever seeing a planeswalker get attacked now after all the arena play to not hear the little voices. <laughs> Attack to fairy. To fairy says, "Do you want me to phase you out of time?" You know, something like that. Ooh, Thought erasure <laughs> from Zreen, and it looks like Corey has drawn a couple of good ones Would off you that like crisis. My game-winning bomb. The other game-winning bomb. The third game winning bomb, the fourth game winning bomb, or a couple things that just draw cards. Balls in your court. I like this play from Shaheen because there's two copies of Scape Shift. Look at that card hiding out yeah. in Sarani's hand. And you see how he's setting it up. Right, with two copies of Scape Shift, he can't take them both. So one Scape Shift and two Scape Shifts doesn't make much of a difference. So he leaves them both. And you point out the Deputy of Detention in Shaheen's hand. That'll answer one round of zombies. But it actually looks like he's going to take care of the Krasis. Now that's a bit of a surprise to me. So the thing that I'm surprised about here is that he decided to mill this copy of Tyrant Scorn, because that card's actually incredible in this matchup with specifically Deputy of Detention, where you can just return your own Deputy to your hand and give right. you more virtual copies of that effect. And it's one of the more important effects in the matchup itself. But if he has other copies of Deputy of Detention, Tyrant Scorn, and things to that effect, and he's just looking for ways to close the game, it would make sense that he would do that. I think you're right, because you can put the Deputy back in your hand. Right. And, and the Krasis is a 0-0. Zero, zero. Right. The, the things that it's exiling are not cards that Sarani is that worried about returning to the battlefield. You know, zombie tokens, which don't right. actually come back in 0-0 zero, zero Hydroid Krasis, for example. Corey going to tap 7 mana. So it's 3 floating and cast Scape Shift. Uh, with a card like Scape Shift, you actually have to float your mana before casting it. Whereas when you cast it, your opponent says, okay, then it's already resolving. And it looks like he's just sacrificing seven lands. It's two green, one blue in the pool. So and he's sacrificing the seven in order to leave up this field of ruin so he can make zombies right. at instant speed. He wants to be able to get four field of the dead to get those triggers. Right. And make Three sure lands with different names, and that's exactly enough to make zombies. Exactly. Ooh, and getting a copy of Evolving Wilds here Love is it. another way that Baumeister is going to be able to keep getting zombies with Flash, so to speak. Field of the Dead. When it when land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands with different names, put a 2-2 zombie into play. You know what's better than one zombie or two or, no. heck, 27 zombies? 28 zombies. Say he's falling just. Say he's getting about thirty to fifty zombies here. Falling short though. <laughs> They're wild zombies. <laughs> They're just, right. We just see deputy of detention trying to play in Sarani's yard. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make his land drop for the turn. Then we'll get up there. That is a 2 and then an 8 to make 28. That, that is definitely the easiest way to represent 28 zombies. I mean, it's that or get 5 <laughs> dice or something. And I imagine neither player thinks they're long for this world either way. Right, either, they, either the game ends or they die. Now it's 282. Yeah. Or 262. 262. <laughs> 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 Maybe it's eight of them with two one one counters on each of them. That's not true. Another scape shift in hand. Now I don't believe his deck Ooh, actually ripped another copy of Hydroid Crisis. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. It's a good hand for Corey. No, 
not easy to grind through. This is a lot of the quote-unquote problem with the Esper Hero decks right now as they kind of struggle against just a bunch of Hydroid Crisis. Yeah, Fodder Razor, what would you like to take here? Probably one of the Hydroid Crises. You can just roll a die, pick which one. They're all pretty bad for you. One more deputy is in Shaheen's hand. I believe he left the surveil on top. Okay. It's on top. Corey, that might entice Corey to use this field of ruin. Ooh, Bolus's Citadel. That's a big one. All right. So Deputy Retention exiles all of the zombies. Land and a pass. And yeah, Corey actually just going to grow Spiral. Leaves the Field of Ruin as is. Puts an island into play. Gets four zombies. This is leaving that Field of Ruin in play to try and leave a lethal number of zombies kind of right. in the tank. And should see how many more lands are in Corey's deck. He sacrificed seven. So he has three, six, nine, eleven on the battlefield, minus the seven in his graveyard that he sacrificed. So that's a total of 18 lands. I believe these decks traditionally play 27 of them, and the deck list here makes it a little bit difficult to parse the yeah. exact quantity of lands in his deck. Yeah, 27 or 28 is the number. I suppose... Unlike what you see out of Valak Scapeshift decks in Modern, uh, this deck does not typically have to worry about running out of lands. You can Scapeshift. I believe there are 30 lands in Baumeister's deck. Oh, wow. Okay, so just half lands. Here's a large Hydroid Crisis for Corey. Leaving up a copy of Evolving Wilds, trying to keep, again, those flash zombies at the ready. Four more cards for Baumeister. Another land means four more zombies. Here's some untapped ones. And he will pass. Evolving Wild's not guaranteed here to find a land. Corey has gone through a lot of his deck, only plays four basics, or make that five basics. Bolus's Citadel from Brian. Needs to find a way to rebuy one of these Deputy of Detention. There's only real ways to, sw to sweep the zombie tokens. Right. And there's a point where he's at a high enough life total, he may be incentivized to wait to pull the trigger on that. So you're looking at Tyrant Scorn and Teferi Time Raveler? Right. Those are the big two things that are going to let you do that. Oh, interesting play there. So Sarani could have rolled up Teferi to draw this Teferi off the top, but with such a high life total, Sarani chose to instead cast the Teferi off the top of his library okay. just to add some loyalty to that one. Goes down to 24. I think you're right. He's not going to take lethal this turn. All right, it looks like Corey would untap with 12 zombies, with Shaheen having two blockers. Well, he He'd... also has this Hydroid Krasis, though. Okay, so you're right with the Krasis. Yeah, if Sarani doesn't have a removal spell, I believe I think this, this is, is lethal. lethal. Maybe he was just banking on Baumeister not having another land to get with Evolving Wilds. Yeah, Evolving Wilds does find a forest, so it's 12 zombies and the Krasis. Right, 8 in the air means also, that 8 on the ground is lethal. Right, could bank on the Hydroid Krasis going after Teferi instead. <sighs> That's a hard one to bank on here. It Things look good for Corey. Maybe just send them all upstairs. And here's the attack. If the Rejuvenator's getting in, I imagine we're seeing some upstairs yeah. action. And then we are. So Corey Bowmeister takes the first game. Scape shift does fire off, and the army of zombies is too much for Shaheen. It's a 1 0 win. That was an incredibly convincing game on the Bandscape yeah. Shift side of things. Yeah, and on Shaheen's side, he had most of the tools he wanted, right? He had a turn two hero. He had a turn three hero. 
he had both copies of main deck copies of Deputy of Detention. This is running, I think, above average for the formula, yeah. Double yeah. Thought Erasure, double Deputy, couple to fairies, got to have two of his more important card in the matchup and those heroes to be able to apply pressure. And it still just wasn't good enough, even with Baumeister skipping two or three turns to not really do very much. Yeah, it really speaks to the difficulty of the matchup. Sheen's going to have to look for ways to improve. Now, all of our games in sideboarding right now, the updates, Brian Brown Doohan takes game one in modern, and it is Will Pulliam with Rakdos Reanimator taking game one over on the legacy table. Okay. This uh, special podcast guest keeping the dream alive. Yeah, they, it looks like they uh carrying weight so far. Yeah, you know, it's, it's a good thing they picked up this relatively unknown individual. So sideboards for Shaheen. He had most of his tools that game, can we mention, but it was not enough. I would, can he add more? Do any of these things help? So a lot of the things that he's going to be looking to do here are shave on some of his spot removal because that's just not very powerful in the matchup and bring in things like Golden Demise, Kaya's Wrath, etc. to be able to check the zombie tokens themselves and then things like Duress, which are going to be good at just whittling down resources. These circuitous routes, which even if it feels silly to just get two lands, that one piece of cardboard making two pieces of cardboard ends up being so relevant for a resource-heavy deck like Bant Scapeshift. So anything Saronin can do to reduce the quantity of resources that Baumeister has is going to be a win for Sarani. So we've caught some of the recent spoilers. We're in spoiler season right now for Commander 2019. It's the next set coming out here. You can pre-order that from Star City Games, and it will be shipping the end of next week, Friday to August 23rd. But right now, it's available for order at go.starcitygames.com slash C19. I am so excited for some of these previews. I'm uh, big fan of Zedru, the goat lady, donating things, and there are some cards that just donate automatically for upside, and that is right up my alley. Very excited about that. I've already pre-ordered some cards myself. I always like the concept of Zedru decks because you're giving other people your junk, basically. Oh yeah, you I know. Oh, here's this terrible card I'm playing. Why don't Why don't you have it? I'm never the type to play anything that's just uh, has a horrendous drawback. I'm always the type to play something like Quarantine Field, where I exile two or three permanents and, and then, then just give, give away this Oblivion Ring effect and go. You know what? I insist you have this torpor orb or this useless <laughs> permanent. So you're not giving them bronze bombshells or things like that? No. the pro One, bronze, bronze bombshell, they kind of just go, all right, yeah, I mean, I take seven, I guess. I'll go to 33. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, even illusions of grandeur. It's just, all right, yeah, I fetched a couple times, so I guess I'll go to 17 after taking 20. You give them Lord of the Pit. No, you can't play that. That's yeah. a black card. And mm. the other problem with a lot of them is something like Steel Golem or Grid Monitor, where you can't right. cast creature spells. Uh, if they kill your Zedru in response, you lose your way to <laughs> donate it. <laughs> or Aggressive Mining, oh, yeah, uh, you know. where you can't play lands. They just kill your commander, and all of a sudden you can't play lands to pay the commander tax. Yeah, well, that's, you know, it, it was an aggressive play. But, you know, donating something like Winter Orb or Standstill, that's my speed. Standstill yeah, in particular just is just a special really kind rude. of like, all right, everybody, what do y'all say we play a long game of cards? Like, a long game of cards. Like, like, let's just not play cards. Like, let's draw cards one at a time and put Lance on the battlefield forever. I like the global enchantments. You can give them trolley things like, was it land equilibrium? <laughs> is that card legal? I think you can play it in Commander. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking of the um, the white card out of Mirage that's like there can only be five lands in play. Okay, yeah, that one's not fun. Yeah, that one's not legal for sure. Is that limited resources? Is yeah, that? limited yeah, yeah. resources is banned. A land equilibrium is everybody has to have the same number of lands. If you try to play more lands than the person with the least lands, then you have to sacrifice Ugh, one. I don't like that. Cause I want my deck to win with Elixir of Immortality. Well, yeah, so you get two lands in play. And a land equilibrium, and you just, you know, maybe you can Zurin Orb away all your other lands, and you just, every time your deck gets low, you just oh. shuffle the elixir back in. <laughs> it's nice. Really fun gameplay. You gain five life every so often. 
Look, I just want to cast the same Fluster Storm enough times to remind my opponent of what's up. Both players on seven here for the second game. Things evening up on the legacy table as well. Pete Ingram takes the sideboard game. And we'll see Thought Erasure. See Veil of Summer out of the sideboard for Corey Bowmeister. Veil of Summer is so strong. And we see Agent of Treachery from Corey That's as well. Nice That's out of the card. sideboard, yeah. Stealing a Planeswalker, very strong. And even if you kill the Agent of Treachery, that is, that Planeswalker has been stolen. Corey just keeping a two land hand here. Wonder if we're gonna see him go for something like Elvish Rejuvenator. Yeah, the big thing here is you may even see him go for something like Growth Spiral. If Mana Denial is kind of the plan here, just taking away things that cycle could be so yeah. strong. Looking at Shaheen's hand, he has a Teferi Time Raveler in hand. He has a Dovin's Veto in hand. Because of the Veto, he's thinking that he might have to take Cory's Teferi. Yeah, is, is Shaheen missing a white source? Certainly doesn't have one on the battlefield. Don't know whether one's in his hand. Yeah. Takes the Teferi. A lot of the question in this is how long you think the game is going to go and what con right. you think the game is going to end up looking like. All right, left the card on top. Probably a white source coming. Corey leaves up that growth spiral, and there is Isolated Chapel. So it's the white source you were talking about. Two mana. It'll be Hero of Precinct 1. Big fan of developing the hero before playing any of the other cards because when you don't think you're going to win the incredibly long games, you need to prioritize developing a threat over your card that's just going to kind of maybe knock Corey a little bit further behind. Rejuvenator was the play in hand, but it looks like Corey has drawn Circuitous Route, so Ooh. he's going to shock for that and get it into play before Shaheen has that Dovin's Veto up. That's a pretty big turn of events here. Yeah, that's a big couple of cards drawn on Baumeister's side between the untapped land as well as the route. And I was saying, it almost feels like Shaheen has to leave up Dovin's Veto. He's going to, because he knows there's a scape shift in Corey's hand, he's going to take down Counter Magic for one more turn here to make Teferi. You've got to attack. You need to apply pressure. The nice thing about this Teferi is it also gives you a way to cast your sweepers at instant speed. Minus one, draws a card, no targets there, but does find a land. And he'll attack in for two. But shields are down, we'll see what Corey does with this turn. You also have to develop this Teferi before you try to go for Dovin's Veto, just because there's that Veil of Summer hiding out in Baumeister's All hand. Right, it's you still need there. to be able to put Corey in a position where he either gets no value out of this Veil of Summer by having to preempt it and just turning it into a sort of silence or make it to where he can't respond with the card. I also like that on Shaheen's board, there's no great target for this Agent of Treachery. Like, yes, Corey can take the Teferi. Shaheen will attack it down, and he'll get to keep playing. There may be a point where he prioritized playing this Teferi to try and find another white source, because it would be pretty brutal if Corey just played Agent of Treachery and took the Isolated Chapel before this Godless Shrine was there. Circuitous route for Corey. And the idea here is Corey knows that his, the top of his library is just so much stronger than Shaheen's. He gets two more lands. Now, Veil of Summer. Spells you cannot con control can't be countered this turn. If co What Corey is setting up for, I believe here, is just next turn, main phase Veil of Summer, then cast Escape Shift. Correct. He just wants to try and create a situation where he can force this spell through whatever it is Shaheen has and hope that he doesn't have an answer as well as everything else that he has going on. I believe right now Shaheen has Dovin's Veto and Deputy of Detention. Let's see what Corey wants to do. It's four mana, five, six, seven. Could be a shift, could be an agent. Looks like it will be Agent of Treachery. Two, three. Steals a permanent when it enters the battlefield. 
This is actually kind of nice because it can kind of flip the script a little bit and make it to where Sarani can't actually answer it. Because if it takes this to Fairy, then Sarani can't cast his counter spells. You're right. Sarani's only counter spell here is Dovin's Veto, so it actually doesn't play against this. The Teferi is Cory's, and Agent is not, you know, a. It, even if the Agent leaves, the Teferi is still Cory's. Exactly. This is his now. And the best way that Sarani has to answer that Agent is something to the effect of Deputy of Detention. And uh, let me tell you what you do not want to put under a Deputy of Detention. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, some, a 7 drop with a nice enters the battlefield ability. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a bit rough. In Corey's seat, if your opponent targets your tr agent of treachery with a deputy of detention, you lean forward, say no take backs, and throw your yeah. agent under the deputy of detention. On the other hand, deputy of detention on Teferi, if you then have a way to, say, return your own deputy of detention or kill it, that's a way to steal your own Teferi back. We'll see what he picks. It is a deputy of detention, and he's going to go for the Teferi. <gasps> and Veil of, yeah, Veil of Summer from Corey. Corey still draws the card. Oh, that's such a blowout. Oh, he counter. He didn't. He Veil of Summer the triggered the trigger, ability, right. ability. Right. And Sarani couldn't Dovin's veto back because of Teferi. And that, because Shaheen knew about the veil. Right, right. Oh, that's so brutal. Yeah. So Shaheen losing the deputy of detention. A pivotal card here. Well, there is a deputy on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. Elvish Rejuvenator finds a land. Corey will have scapeshift mana up. He can end step the scapeshift if he wants, thanks to Teferi. Oh, gross. Yeah, he'll just pass. And this is part of why Teferi is so good in the escape shift deck, is you just get a shot to make almost 40 zombies on the end step. I guess it's only... Oh, well, no, because you only three of them could be field of dead, the dead, so... You know... Only, I guess, yeah. I guess Corey would have to settle for a mere 27 zombies. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria from Shaheen. Draws a card, but he can't use the mana on Corey's turn. So Teferi will minus three instead of drawing a card. It will tuck away the Teferi. We'll put it back into Shaheen's deck. And Corey's in the scape shift here. Sacrificing all nine lands. All right. Three fields, six other lands would be 27 zombies. Feels like Shaheen, I'll see 27 zombies, Shaheen has five blockers. That's, That's a lethal. cool 45 damage coming across yeah. the creatures that Corey already has on the battlefield. Feels like this should be lethal. That's a good feeling. I think there are, there are enough zombies. Corey just kind of checking his bases here, going, well, you know, I think I've won, but there's no reason to give up any percentage points if I don't have to. Doesn't want to get basics, wants to get Field of Ruin, Evolving Wilds to make sure he can get instant speed zombies if necessary. Bunch of duels to not get the basics, so Evolving Wilds and Field of Ruin still have things to get in the deck. He only has three basics left. <laughs> 261 zombies. And that's the handshake from Shaheen. Whether it's 27 or 200, it is too many. Corey, the 2-0 winner here. Yeah, and that was just, that was a fairly dominating performance that kind of shows why we aren't seeing as many Esper Hero decks in the format right now is even if the deck tends to line up well against what other people are doing, it can just struggle so hard against these land-based strategies. So Corey, still undefeated in team tournaments here, has never has never played a team tournament on the tour that he has not won. Picks up a win there. <laughs> and you see him moving over to Will Pulliam. That's the match where if Will can get the game three win, that will be the round. Do you think that maybe, you know, instead of thinking that Shaheen and Pete decided to team with someone else, do you think Corey decided maybe he wanted better teammates even though they won the that. last tournament? 
He's unstoppable. Here's the thought. Last time they won the team over, so Shaheen has to. Here's what happened. Shaheen has to play Esper. And so when they won last time, Shaheen played a colonnade deck in Modern. Right. And so they pitched the team, and she said, hey, guys, I'm playing Esper. And Corey said, Corey wanted to play Standard because he plays Standard. He said, look, man, you can't play Esper in Modern right now. There's this Hogak thing going on. She said, well, well I'm, I'm playing Standard then. And that's when the deal breaker happens. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I feel like we're just narrating an episode of uh, MTV's Behind the Music. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in the Rakdos Reanimator versus Four Color Delver match here, we've reached turn three, which is usually good for the Delver deck. Yeah, generally speaking, Rakdos Reanimator wants to win earlier than this. Even if it doesn't literally put the opponent at zero life on the first or second turn, that's generally the sweet spot for when that deck wants to kind of do its thing, so to speak. Yeah, this is not a Brainstorm deck. This is a deck that looks at its opening seven and tries to kill you with it. Right. This is a deck that benefited a great deal from the London Mulligan. This is something where its opening sevens can just be so strong with something like Chancellor of the Annex and Tomb, Reanimate, Dark Ritual. It's sacrifice and card advantage for raw power. All right. Now we do get to have some some play going on here. So on the end step, Will is loading up for a combo. It's a copy of Entomb. He has, looks like, a six or seven card hand, even with this on the stack. And we see a big pile of dazes in Ingram's hand from the looks of things. Right, then he'll have to decide what it is he wants to daze. And there's even a trick he can set up here if he only has the one where he can wasteland polluted delta. And okay. then, respond, assuming polium goes to fetch in response, then Ingram gets the chance to respond to that fetch and daze the entomb. And the reason that Ingram thought so hard about this, so we see in the graveyard that Ingram doesn't actually have anything that gives him full information of Pulliam's hand. Generally, right. when you're playing against a reanimator strategy, you get to fight against one of two things. You get to either fight against the enablers, these are your entombs, faithless lootings, etc., or you get to fight against the payoff cards. These are your actual reanimate spells, you know, the namesake reanimate, exhume, animate dead, and so on. And you don't really want to try to spend too many resources fighting both because you get a sort of virtual card advantage by just fighting over the reanimate spells. Because if you let this entomb resolve, then future entombs from Polium don't really matter because there's already a card in the graveyard he wants to reanimate. So instead, we see Ingram kind of picking the fight of, I'll actually just try to beat up on reanimate, animate dead, etc. Target was selected from Will. He decides to go for Elish Norn. Now we see his hand exhume, exhume, unmask. And I actually like this line from Ingram. The big reason is yeah. when you have something like a Tarmogoyf out, you can shrink the number of outs that Polium has by just attacking because eventually reanimate's not an out if you don't have enough life to pay for it. It is unmask, exiling the second exhume from Will's hand. Pete again, having to decide whether this is something he wants to daze or whether he wants to give Will a look at the hand. Yeah, and this is always tough because if you use a counter spell on this on this unmask, then that's pretty close to what unmask would have done anyway. It's just whether or not you want to try to fight over this information that yeah. you're going to be giving away by just putting your hand on the table. Yeah, this early on the combo turn, it is scary to give Rakdos full information of your hand. Then Will can kind of puzzle out whether or not he can go for the combo or not. Exactly. When these four-color Delver decks, there aren't anything, there's not one mana counter spell, right? It's actually things like Flusterstorm, Spell Pierce, etc. Right. These are what are what we refer to as soft permission spells because they're conditional. If your opponent has three mana and is casting a one mana spell, your Spell Pierce doesn't actually do anything. So Pullian being able to suss out what hoops he needs to jump through to turn off these counter spells is actually incredibly valuable. It's like three dazes in the hand for Ingram. Does he want to reveal that? He's going to float some mana. Cast Brainstorm. 
Thoughtseize, Delver, and Surgical Extraction. Surgical Extraction is what we call a hit. Yeah, that was the big one. The other two are ones you can put back. I agree. But you have to fire it off now then, right? Unless you want to fight over this Unmask, because what the Surgical is going to do is kind of give you a zero mana hard counter. As yeah. long as there's only one creature in the graveyard, then something like Exhume isn't going to be good enough, and anything that targets is very easy for you to counter. That's it. Surgical Extraction the play. It hits Alish Norn. Yeah, well, not playing a blue deck, so that just happens. Gets to look at the hand. It has two more Exhumes. Faithless Looting, Gristlebrand, and Chancellor of the Annex. So, heads up play from Will, where he didn't put a Gristlebrand or a Chancellor in the graveyard in order right. to play around Surgical Extraction. Because he knew he would kind of be forcing Ingram's hand with a card like Unmask the following turn. And Elishnorn is probably a good enough card to beat Tarmogoyf, but it's not such a good card that it's going to give Ingram the opportunity to take cards out of your hand. Three dazes and a thought sees is what Will sees. This feels really hard to beat because the line I was looking at was fetch for a red source, faithless looting, and if you draw the land, land exhum. But there's just no way that's beating this stack of dazes. Right, and fetching up something like Badlands is pretty rough against this wasteland. You may end up feeling priced into that type of play if you think that if you want to hit a land anyway, yeah. then that's going to be good enough for these exhumes. But this row of dazes with in conjunction with the wasteland is so powerful. That's what these Delver decks bank well, on. Right, so Unmask can take the first daze. You can run an exhum into the second daze. But then your second exhum is either going to get hit by the third daze or by the thought seize. This is just a rough look for Will. Right, and you, he only has so much time. So normally you could say take Thoughtseize because that's Ingram's proactive interaction. That's to say mm -hmm. that Ingram is the one with agency over when you get to use that. The dazes are things that Polyam has to sort of choose to play into. This means that he can try to weave around, bob and weave around them given the opportunity. But the way that things are set, playing out and set up, Pulliam doesn't have time to just jam a spell into a daze, jam a spell into a daze, jam a spell into a daze. Because this Tarmogoyf is applying pressure. Though it is not a very big Tarmogoyf. It is only a 3-4 at the moment. So he uh, takes one of the dazes. Or no, goes for the thought seize. Changes his mind. But how do you beat three dazes on Will's side? Uh, Cabal Therapy is the card that he is drawing to here. Okay, that that would work. <laughs> I would uh, name days. You know what? Yeah. I we don't want to say it too loud and give him any tips, but okay, I agree okay. with you. <laughs> Ex and actually, the faithless looting, and this is even more interesting from Pete. He just double days as the faithless looting. It's very strong here because now this is kind of fighting the enabler because you know that there are two payoff cards in right. hand, and he can wasteland away the Badlands. Correct. This is just trying to yeah. make it to where Polium doesn't have time to play all of his cards. Oh, and I love this. A swing in for Tarmogoyf. Delver was the draw, and we know the card under Delver is a... I believe we just... Right? It's, it's a, a lightning, lightning bolt. bolt. So right. it'll transform, and that, that's lethal next turn. Yes. This was really good, well played by Pete. Yeah, absolutely. This is honestly both sides of this very well played, and this is kind of what you'll see from these combo decks sometimes, is things just don't yeah. break. And that bolt does it. So Will extends the hand, and Pete Ingram picks up the win. Wow, 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 wow. That was that was so back and forth because, wow, yeah. you know, it kind of feels like letting things through, that Pulliam might have this, and, oh, it turns out he has one turn, or he is literally at zero life. So we go to Modern, where things are going to be decided with the four-color Urza deck, and looks like... That was a handshake as well. You saw them as he moved over because Brian Brown doing is the winner there, which means despite Corey's best efforts, he team does pick up the L this round and it is Ingram, Brian Brown doing and Sarani moving to 2-0. Yeah, and you know, both of these squads are just so strong. This is what you'll run into in these team events where you'll see someone look like they are having an incredibly dominant